Welcome back to our gist. Today's question is leak code 841, keys and rooms. So there are n rooms labeled from 0 to n minus 1, and all the rooms are locked except for room 0. Your goal is to visit all the rooms. However, you cannot enter a locked room without having its keys. When you visit a room, you may find a set of distinct keys in it. Each key has a number on it denoting which room it unlocks, and you can take all of them with you to unlock the other rooms. So given an array rooms where rooms i is the set of keys that you can obtain if you visit room i, return true if you can visit all rooms or false otherwise. So in example one, we have these rooms. Think of it as the indexes. So index of zero is room zero. Index of one is room one, room two, and room three, right? In index zero or room zero, we have the key to one. Let's move into room one. So at index one, we have the key to room two. So we can move to index of two. We have the key to room three. So we move to index of three. So we've reached the end, we can return true from this, right? So we can visit all the rooms with the keys that have been provided within each room. So let's first draw out this graph, right? So we have zero, which can go to one and three, one, which can go to three, zero, and one, three, which goes to zero. And then we just have two on its own, right? So this is what the graph looks like. As you can see, it's not acyclic because we have multiple directions between nodes. So that's why we need the visited set to keep track of which rooms we have visited. And then we can use some bog standard recursion. So if we start off at zero, so room zero, within room zero, we have this bag of keys. We have keys to room one and keys to room three. So we're gonna have some, some kind of array where we can pass down to our next recursive call to the next room, those keys. So if we go into room one, we're gonna pass these down in the recursive call, but before we do that, we have to add zero into our visited set, right? And then we can go to one. So we pass the keys of one and three. We look at room one, which key we can find. We have zero. We can add that into our list of keys. We add one into the visited set. So let's say we go to three. Three has the key of zero. So we're gonna pass in that list of keys from the previous recursive call. Three doesn't have any new keys, so we don't add the new key in here. So this would suggest using a set to hold our keys. And we also need to add three within the visited set. Right, so if we go to zero from three, we check the visited. Zero is already within the visited, so we return from that. So we go back to three. Three has nowhere else to go because it only has zero key. Then we go back to one. We visited three. If we go back to zero, zero is already in visited. So essentially, we're going to go back to zero and we're going to exit this, right? Now, the thing is, in order to get a value of true or false, we need to look at the length of visited and set has a size property which we can use. So if set.size is equal to rooms.length, then we can return true, else we return false. Pretty straightforward solution. Time complexity for this one is going to be O n plus m, where n is the number of nodes and m is the number of keys, and then space is going to be O of n. So let's start off by creating the visited set. And we'll also create a key list set to store our keys. We'll create the DFS function, pass in current room and current keys as, parameter, as parameters. And then when we call, we'll pass in zero as the starting room and then key list as our list of keys. So firstly, we need to check if the room we're at is in the visited set. So if visited has current room, we can return, else we add it to our visited set. So we need to loop through the room's keys and add them to our current key set. So that key of rooms, current room, current keys dot add key. That way we never add a duplicate using the set. And then we loop through the keys. And we recurse passing in the key and the current keys list. Let that recursive function run. And then at the end, we need to check whether visited size is equal to rooms.length. Okay, let's run it. Submit it. And there you go. 